Aaron Elamine of Elements Design back here with you one more time and today we are going to be talking about making the zebra pattern out of the polymer clay canes and uh, we're gonna start off here by kneading our clay um, there should be a couple of YouTube videos on kneading clay but that just means to soften alright so you do that in your hand some people use machines I use hand softening we're using about a third of a package on the package of uh, polymer clay Fimo okay we're gonna use two different packages we're gonna use one dark color one light color for the color contrast and those are 56 gram packages we're gonna use about a third of the package okay once we knead it into the ball we're gonna flatten out those two opposite colors in this case we're going to use brown and white and uh, I'm actually rolling or flattening them on a mirror surface that makes it a little bit easier for me to pick up when I'm ready to move and transfer my clay from one place to the next for whatever reason I may need to do that and these two discs are approximately the size of a half dollar a little bit bigger than a half a dollar silver dollar coin and approximately a half an inch thick okay and it's gonna vary and before we even get started heavily, I can tell you certainly you're going to have to make this pattern again and again and again to perfect it, right? So once you have your disc, your coins, or your disc-sized coins, um, and the amount of clay that you use is going to determine the size of those discs. Now, I like my discs approximately about a half an inch in thickness or really about a quarter of an inch anywhere between a quarter and a half of an inch and the reason why is because I like to be able to use my exacto knife properly and to get a clean cut as I'm going through we'll talk about that in a minute but after flattening out those white um, and brown balls of clay that you've kneaded into a circle go ahead and uh, we're gonna outline them okay we're gonna outline that disc so just lay the disc flat onto a sheet of paper take a regular pencil give it an outline around the size of it okay this is the outline that we have left the trace it looks a little bit like this it's not perfect but it'll be great enough to start our project from here what I did was I just looked through some photographs of different zebras and I found out the type or the part the port the part of the zebra pattern that I wanted and in your mind you have to kinda of have to shrink that concept down and to squeeze it into a very small space right because zebra stripes and the actual real life zebra are very long and wide you don't have that much space to work with in the bead so you have to make a really small version feel free to draw one very similar to mine and this one is not totally filled in um, but it doesn't have to be filled in because what you're basically concentrating on is the line so everything that's a line we're going to be tracing directly onto the clay alright so we want to take this picture that we have there's a little close-up picture we want to place that picture which is the size of the clay because we use the clay to make the trace we want to place that directly over the clay that we use to trace the circle right so that's gonna be white we have one white and one brown they should both be about the same we're gonna do this with the white clay and the brown clay as you'll see and we're gonna make two identical patterns right so get your piece of pencil get your piece of uh, get your pencil out and trace your pattern directly onto the clay try to use a pointy pencil so you can make your indentations through the paper onto the clay as strong as possible and you'll see what we mean right here the lines that you see in the clay are the indentations that were made by placing the paper on top of the clay and drawing the pattern of the zebra print through the paper onto the clay then I use an exacto knife to cut it into sections I do this with both the white and the brown or black or whatever color you're using once again you are gonna have to practice this several times to get it down to get it perfect it's not gonna be a simple task okay um, use an exacto knife to cut into the portions into the parts into the sections All right, you can trim off the extra edge right and once you trim off the extra edge you can actually separate your parts out this is the clay 
All I did was follow the lines that were left in through the tracing. And I'm cutting every place there's a line on the clay that was traced through the paper. All right. I'm cutting in each one. I'm going to do that with the dark color as well as the light color. This is a different photograph, the same process, the same pattern that I used initially, but you get a chance to see this stuff is not pretty when you put it together. It does not look like it's going to be something special. There's a kneading technique that helps you compress this portion of the clay down, but this, this video here is more about the combination of colors and the pattern that you need to make the cane. It's not so much about how to make a cane. I'll save that for a separate tutorial. But there's going to be a hand kneading technique that you use from this point. You have to pick up these pieces all in one unit, right? Um, and you have to be able to knead them into a cane, right? And that's going to be a, a special technique that we'll show a video for. But some people know that technique already. And for those who know the technique, once you roll that down into a cane, this is you get something very similar to this. Okay, which could be a portion of a zebra print, a zebra pattern, brown and white. And when you put those together, you get a lot. Okay, here's a, an example of a tiger pattern that I did. And I use the same exact technique, the same exact concept, the same exact idea of drawing onto the paper first. The drawing onto the paper first is the most tremendous part of this tutorial that you can learn. This is a secret giveaway right <laughs> this is how you create multiple levels of patterns not just a zebra pattern okay so here's a similar one that's made except I use black orange and white okay and we get more of a tigerish pattern so you can interact and interuse the same exact skills use different colors and get different techniques alright Aaron El Amin Elements Design I hope you enjoyed that video if you look very closely at a lot of these uh, logs that I've already cut you'll be able to see that I have incorporated the zebra pattern I think if you look from the bottom you'll see in the bottom you'll see a little bit of zebra pattern in the base of that and then one two three up from the bottom four up from the bottom you can see the yellow and the, I say the orange and black zebra pattern um, in effect there and all the way in the back and the upper right hand corner you can see the cheetah pattern and I have a tutorial on that one how to make the cheetah pattern or the leopard pattern and you can look up that one also. Please subscribe to my page. Thank you for viewing. Unfortunately, I make jewelry all day, just about every day. I don't have enough time to respond to all the questions that might come. But if I see something that I really need to respond to and I have the time to, I will. I want to thank you very much. I have a lot more videos coming out. I'll be showing you exactly how to knead the clay, how to roll the clay, some things that need more than just a photograph. They need a full video. Okay, so please subscribe. Check us out on Instagram for some photos. Um, join us on Facebook. Friend us on Facebook. And we will see you out there in video land with more videos. And Aaron Alamine signing off. Elements Design. Thank you very much and have a beautiful day.